Hello, my name is John Wenzel. I'm the Extension Veterinarian with New Mexico State University's Department of Extension Animal Science and Natural Resources. So when we get ready to go, we need to figure out which needle we're going to do, and then we start into the rest of the equipment that we're going to use. This is a transfer needle. It's used to mix products, and the likelihood is, especially when we talk about vaccine, many of our products are made in such a way that we have to mix them with a diluent. And so this transfer needle will accomplish that. It's really important to, to, to know how to use it. You've got to make sure that it's always clean. And you always puncture the diluent first, and then you invert it and insert it into the, to the bottle that has the freeze-dried cake of, of the vaccine product in it. I have a wire here because when you puncture that rubber stopper, when you're transferring, a lot of times it will cut a core of that rubber. So I have this wire that goes through to make sure you knock out any rubber pieces that are left behind in the transfer needle because if it does go into the system that we have here, showing these other syringes out here, it can cause uh, a plug into, say for instance with this one, that rubber plug can go through the line and it will ruin the syringe. It will plug it up to where you cannot, uh, it, it won't function anymore. So it's really important to make sure that you always knock the rubber plugs out of those transfer needles. I have also some uh, different examples of pistol grip syringes and other types. I use this method. I always put a piece of electrical tape on a syringe that is used with a modified live product or most of the products that we mix because the preservatives in other Bactrins or killed products can leave a residue that inactivates modified live vaccines. So we want to make sure that that does not occur because our objective is to immunize, just not vaccinate. So make sure that you label your syringes in such a way that this is only used for a modified live product and we never put a Bactrin or a killed product into this syringe. And so these, these types of syringes are designed to where you can use them for multiple doses. You have to refill them each time. And it's very important that you, when you get ready to fill this syringe, that you put a clean needle on each time. You never puncture a bottle of vaccine or product with a needle that's bit in an animal. So you always change and put a clean needle on before you ever puncture the bottle to fill your syringe. So that way the system remains clean. And so there's a, these are a diff, couple of different types. They're both designed the same way. They're for given different, they're adjustable. You can use them for given smaller dosages. You know, in, in especially when we're talking about certain products that the, the dosages might be small, like a 2cc, I would prefer to use a smaller type uh, barreled syringe so that you're more accurate in the dosing. Because sometimes with these 50 ml uh, barreled uh, pistol grip syringes, they may not be as accurate when they're, you're only delivering 2cc products. This is an electronic syringe. Uh, this is made by the Tapare company. Uh, it's a multi-doser. And what this does is it has an automatic fill. You invert the bottle and hang it. And you prime this thing and it fills it up. And all you do to activate it is you push the button and it, uh, it activates the uh, plunger. These are extremely accurate. And the nice thing about these syringes are is, is every dose is the same. And also it relieves fatigue in administrators. You know, when you when you're vaccinate hundreds of cattle a day, that fatigue in your hand can be pretty, pretty dramatic. And so this eliminates that because it uses it works by just pressing the button and releasing and it, and it delivers the, the pre-measured dose. And, and the nice thing about these is, is they are uh, they're extremely accurate, and you can set the dosages by tenth of a cc, which is important. These are some other systems that are automatic fill syringes that we use. This one is designed for a 2 cc dosage, and uh, what you do is after the bottle is mixed, I use it with this um, container that helps keep the bottle of my vaccine. This is hanging shoot side. This insulates the bottle from the heat and keeps it out of the UV light, which is harmful to modified live products. And so by doing this, that bottle will be hanging inside there. You fill your line and then each dose you can, you can give just by depressing the handle on it. I, these particular uh, systems I use a lot in this part of the world in western United States because a lot of times we're vaccinating in pretty dramatic heat. So I use plastic wire loom over the line to shield, uh, shield it, the vaccine from UV light and helps protect a little bit with the heat product. This is a larger syringe. This can be, a, this is adjustable. This is a 10 cc 
can be adjusted down to it. Like I said, they're not quite as accurate as some of these smaller ones, but if the dosage is larger, this is likely something that will be used. And it's the same design. Once you fill the line and work the air out of it, then it will, uh, it will stay and you can just vaccinate as, as you go along the line. It's important to understand that we, it's really important to keep care of the vaccine. The vaccine should always be kept cool. We want to do everything we can to keep it as cool as we can, we can until we get it into the animal. It will increase the number that we immunize if the vaccine is delivered in such a way, uh, the, way, it's, way the way it's designed to be. And so everything that we can do by keeping it clean, keeping it out of UV light, all of that will help protect our, our products and we get more efficacy out of the products that we're using.